Hello everybody, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Sunday, February 9, 2014. And tonight we have hit new records for temperatures with the rocket stove. That's right, tonight we hit 808 degrees with the rocket stove and it is thanks to the pellet basket revision 2.1. Uh, first let's take a look at the pellet basket that I made originally. This is the first prototype proof of concept. It works surprisingly well. Uh, I actually got eight or nine burns out of this. I was surprised to get two or three burns out of this. So uh, this was a very good proof of concept. It, it allowed me to learn a lot about the way the rocket stove behaves in the firebox and how to adapt a pellet basket or how, how to adapt pellets as a fuel for the rocket stove to work very, very well. And uh, this next picture here is the version 2.1 of the pellet stove basket. Here is revision 2.0 of the basket. You'll notice in this picture I have not removed any of the lower sections, uh, but when I did cut those sections away and try just with the removed sections, I ended up pouring pellets in and they poured right through. It was a miserable failure. So across the center of the basket at the very bottom. I ran and weld, tack welded another rod going across and this gave me the exact opening that I was looking for that now allows the pellets to stay in the basket but as soon as they become uh, very hot embers and start to shrink in size they fall through and get sucked into the horizontal burn chamber of the rocket stove and more come down to replace it Ash buildup is no longer a problem, and I now hit 808 degrees. That is an all-time record. Now you'll notice behind me the uh, agitator just activated, and this is a close-up of the printed circuit board for the agitator. You'll notice that I now have a couple of resistors just sort of tack soldered onto the printed circuit board because I've been adjusting the time intervals. My time interval is now about one and a half seconds on and two and a half minutes in between intervals. Uh, I found that, yes, it's necessary to shake my, my pellet hopper every now and then. No, it's not necessary to shake it for very long because while you, you can shake them loose, you can also shake them too long and compact them and end up jamming the pellets in the tube uh, by shaking it too much. So the, uh, the timed agitator works extremely well. It is complete and uh, the only other thing that I may do is I may still replace this down tube here with something clear. Uh, I'm not sure. It doesn't get very warm on the side so I, I may get away with a plastic. If I do I'll put the pellet hopper further away to this side so that it comes in at an angle toward the stove rather than beside the stove just to uh, prevent any any heat from uh, affecting the tube. But yeah, that's it. Um, last, I want to show you the baffle that I've created for the firebox. This, this baffle right here is what I use to control the airflow inside the, uh, inside the, the firebox. And I use this to bring the stove up to temperature and once the stove is up to temperature, I can remove it completely, and that's when it really takes off. So you reach a threshold temperature, and right now, what am I running at? 617 degrees. I can probably remove this altogether at this point. And then just let the stove continue, and the temperature will continue to rise, and it will eventually hit 
and run at 800 degrees. I've also put a handle on the top of the basket that uh, I can grip the basket and slide it back and forth in the top of the firebox. All the way forward, or I'm sorry, all the way to the back, closest to the tank. <laughs> all the way back, as I was saying, all the way back, closest to the tank is where I get the, the most amount of heat because all of the air is passing in front of the basket and underneath the basket. And if I take and slide it towards the front, away from the tank, I can actually regulate the flow of air going behind the basket and that actually causes the temperature to drop. So I now have not only a, a, a super hot burn, hotter than any wood that I've ever burned in the stove, but also I have the ability to regulate the flow or the, regulate the temperature of the stove simply by shifting the basket front to back. So that's it for now. Uh, like I said, there's very little I have left to do on the rocket stove um, other than enjoy it and continue with some of my other projects in the lab. I hope you are enjoying this video series. As always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace.